coconut trees, mangoes, and precision bombers. These are just a few things the Philippines brings to the table if China invades Taiwan. The Filipino and United States governments have come to an agreement that will allow the U.S. to expand its military presence to the northern islands of the Philippines. This deals a huge blow to any plans Beijing might have for invading Taiwan. But the Philippines isn't just a vital strategic location to launch a military mission against China from, it also offers several other advantages. There are over 7,000 islands in the Philippines, and China should be nervous about each and every one. The United States has five treaty allies in the Indo-Pacific, Australia, South Korea, Japan, Thailand, and the Philippines. However, if a conflict between China and Taiwan arose, the Philippines would be a stone's throw away from the front lines as its northernmost island is only 118 miles or 190 kilometers away from Taiwan. And if Beijing decided to go full-blown Russia and invade a sovereign nation, the Philippines will almost certainly play a major role in the conflict in several ways. The Philippines would react almost immediately to an invasion of Taiwan, not because they necessarily want to protect the island, but because there are an estimated 200,000 Filipino nationals living and working there. The contingency plans are already being formed on how to bring every Filipino home if China invades Taiwan. But Philippine involvement in a conflict in the South China Sea doesn't stop there. In recent months, Ferdinand Bongbong Marcos Jr. and his administration have been strengthening ties with the U.S. in case China tries to move on Taiwan. In fact, during a visit to Manila on February 2, 2023, U.S. Secretary of Defense Lloyd Austin declared that American commitment to the defense of the Philippines is ironclad. Our alliance makes both of our democracies more secure and helps uphold a free and open Indo-Pacific. This announcement was a major cause for concern in Beijing, and it came as little surprise when Mao Ning, a spokesperson for China's foreign ministry, responded to Austin's statement and the expansion of U.S. bases in the Philippines. Mao stated this is an act that escalates tensions in the region and endangers regional peace and stability. Regional countries should remain vigilant about this and avoid being used by the U.S. This rhetoric of destabilization whenever China feels threatened or needs to voice its displeasure over the actions of the U.S. is common. However, rather than blatantly stating that this new agreement between the Philippines and the U.S. is a way to keep Beijing in check and act as a deterrent to their aggression towards Taiwan, both countries state that military bases in the Philippines are just a continuation of the Enhanced Defense Cooperation Agreement signed in 2014. This agreement was put in place to allow for combined training exercises and joint operations that were put on hold during President Rodrigo Duterte's administration when there were discussions of reducing the Philippines' reliance on the United States and forging closer ties with China. It's clear today that Bong Bong Marcos wants to return to the days where the Philippines had a stronger alliance with the U.S. We'll dive deeper into the complex relationship between the U.S. and the Philippines later on. However, it's important to remember that the U.S. colonized the Philippines in 1898, and by its very nature colonization led to the exploitation of the Filipino people and unethical power structures being put in place. But unfortunately, the Philippines has a long history of being colonized by different outside forces, which is one of the reasons why they've kept such a close eye on the situation developing with Taiwan. If China were to attack and seize the island nation, the Philippines could be next, or at the very least, be forced to become submissive to the growing influence of the Chinese government. But this also goes the other way. Beijing has been keeping a close eye on the Philippines as its islands and close ties to the U.S. may pose a serious risk to their future plans. Let's break down the four reasons why the Philippines is complicating China's plans to invade Taiwan and examine how this might prevent World War III from breaking out. Reason 1. Military Intervention If China ever does invade Taiwan, it'll be a difficult battle to win. This is because the island nation has been building up its military and preparing for the possibility of invasion for decades. However, if China launched the full might of its military against Taiwan and no other countries intervened, they would likely be able to capture the island given enough time. That being said, the invasion would be incredibly costly in terms of lives lost and resources expended, but the sheer size of the People's Liberation Army would allow China to eventually break Taiwan's defenses and secure the island. However, an invasion of Taiwan will not happen in a vacuum, and this is where the Philippines is becoming a major problem for China. The Philippine military itself is not the most formidable force in the world. It only has around 100,000 active members, which is significantly less than the approximately 2 million active personnel that the PLA has. The Philippines Air Force consists mostly of cargo planes, with only around 25 attack-type aircraft at its disposal, which would have no effect against the almost 1,200 fighters China has. The Philippine Navy is mostly composed of patrol ships, two frigates, and a corvette. 
China, on the other hand, has the largest navy in the world, with around 50 destroyers and two aircraft carriers at its disposal. So China is not worried about the Philippines' military intervening in their plans to invade Taiwan. What they are afraid of is the fact that the recent agreement between the US and the Philippines will allow the US military to operate more effectively in the region. And if the People's Liberation Army went head-to-head -head with the US, they would lose every time. Therefore, the Philippines and its proximity to Taiwan may be one of the biggest complications in any future plans Beijing has for invading the island. The United States now has nine bases in the Philippines thanks to the new agreement, which would greatly improve its ability to deploy aircraft and naval vessels to the South China Sea and the Strait of Taiwan. This will improve American resupply and operational capabilities in the region. It's suspected the U.S. forces will immediately begin using these bases for training and equipment storage while simultaneously improving their infrastructure. New runways are being built along with other facilities necessary to strengthen the U.S.'s position. With each new base, China's hopes of securing Taiwan without American intervention is slipping away. There are three main advantages that the new bases in the Philippines give the United States, which are three causes for concern in China. The first is the U.S. military will be able to increase the amount of training they can conduct in the region. It also means that other U.S. allies like Australia, Japan, and South Korea may also be able to join in more training missions as well. The more preparation and exercises the U.S. and its allies are able to conduct in the region, the more effective their forces will be in a conflict. Being able to practice maneuvers and tactics in the very location where a conflict might arise gives U.S. forces a huge advantage, and this is all thanks to the Philippines. This factor is particularly important for the U.S. Air Force and the U.S. Marine Corps Aviation, which will now be able to easily conduct exercises utilizing tactical air formations necessary to be effective in an East Asian conflict. The Philippine bases will allow more frequent training, and although there's no real substitute for actual combat, U.S. military personnel now have the ability to train in the actual environment they would be fighting in if China ever invaded Taiwan. The experience in Asian combat environments that U.S. troops are now gaining is making Beijing incredibly nervous and putting a real damper on any future plans they had of invading Taiwan. The second reason the bases in the Philippines are a major complication for China is that the U.S. can use them as forward operation bases to project power into the South China Sea. The facilities in the Philippines will allow the U.S. military to procure supplies, conduct repairs, and carry out maintenance on its ships and aircraft. This will provide the U.S. with the opportunity to always have a fully functional force ready to strike at any given moment. One of the things that China previously had going for it, if they decided to invade Taiwan, was that the U.S. was on the other side of the Pacific, and their bases in the region were some distance away from Taiwan. Now, however, the United States has several bases just over 100 miles from the island, and as the infrastructure is modernized, it could lead to U.S. forces being able to stay fully equipped and operational throughout a prolonged conflict. By allowing the United States military to operate freely and have nine bases in the Philippines, Manila has provided the means for the U.S. forces to grow exponentially in the region. This has not only angered China but has them terrified. Beijing knows that it cannot win a war against the U.S., which is why they've been using gray zone tactics to weaken Taiwan and bring the island under its sphere of influence. However, this may no longer be enough, and any immediate plans to take Taiwan are now under serious threat because of the Philippines and the U.S. bases there. The third and most obvious reason why the U.S. military presence in the Philippines is complicating China's future plans is that the new bases will allow U.S. forces to launch attacks across the South China Sea and target Chinese forces on the mainland. This would only happen if a full-scale war broke out, but it's the fact that the Philippines will act as a launch pad for combat operations that really has China scared. What it comes down to is that China is concerned about the continuously encroaching presence of the United States military in East Asia. Filipino and U.S. forces have already conducted joint combat exercises and disaster training in the Luzon Strait, the body of water that separates the Philippines and Taiwan. But now these exercises come with a new threat for China. The Filipino and U.S. militaries are clearly planning to defend Taiwan, which will be much easier with new bases in the northern Philippine Islands. However, it's worth noting that the Philippine construction prohibits the basing of nuclear weapons within its borders, so at least that's one thing China doesn't have to worry about for the time being. Reason 2. Economic Opportunity it's no secret that China has spread its influence around the world through trade agreements, shipping, and investment in foreign infrastructure projects. Beijing has been able to manipulate leaders, influence decisions, and sway international sentiment thanks to its rapidly growing economy. China's economic might is its main tool for spreading its power across the planet. However, nations that have closely allied themselves with the U.S., especially in Asia, are a thorn in Beijing's side. 
the Philippines definitely falls into that category. Over the past decade, China has been the largest foreign investor in the Philippines. However, Chinese companies are still nowhere near as dominant as U.S. companies are in the country. American companies continue to be the top taxpayers in the Philippines and have contributed more over the years than any other nation to its development. That being said, many U.S. companies take advantage of the cheap labor and loose regulations in the Philippines, but just in terms of economic impact, U.S. companies have more invested than China does. During the Duterte administration, China hoped to weaken U.S. influence over the Philippines and control the country through economic means as it's done with so many other nations. Unfortunately for China, they did not succeed in this endeavor. China still has companies and major investments in the Philippines, but the new administration is clearly looking to strengthen economic ties with the U.S. Manila and Cebu are two major trading centers in the region, and there are huge profits to be made by foreign players who utilize those ports. China is now worried that on top of its military expansion, the United States could use the Philippines to further its economic influence over East Asia. The U.S. has allocated more than $82 million for infrastructure improvements in the Philippines to enhance the access to resources and the capabilities of their bases. This is a huge investment that will bring jobs and economic growth to communities around the military facilities in the Philippines. This is exactly what China has done in other parts of the world with growing economies. It's allowed them to hold power over other governments and influence their decisions. Unfortunately for Beijing, the Philippines will not be another one of its puppets. China invested heavily in the Philippines over the last decade, and now with a renewed alliance with the United States, their investments won't yield the results they had hoped. It's not out of the realm of possibility that Beijing expected one day to control the Filipino government through trade agreements and debt. Perhaps then China could have swayed Manila to support its claims that Taiwan was its territory. At the very least, Beijing hoped that its economic influence would keep the Philippines out of any conflict that arose in the South China Sea. However, this tactic has clearly not worked, which has the Chinese leadership worried. Reason 3. The Philippines is in a unique position to provide humanitarian aid to Taiwan. In the event that a conflict does erupt in the South China Sea, the Philippines will likely see an influx of refugees. This is not ideal for China's plans, as Beijing likely wants to subjugate the Taiwanese people so that the manufacturing capabilities of the island can be maintained once the invasion is complete. Taiwan manufactures over 60% of all semiconductors in the world. This has resulted in the small island becoming an economic powerhouse. However, the fact that the Philippines is so close to Taiwan and Manila has shown in the past that they're willing to take in refugees, Beijing may be nervous that unless they can blockade the entire island of Taiwan, huge amounts of talent and manpower will flee to the Philippines. If China attacks, there will be a mass exodus of Filipino nationals back to their homeland. With them will also come millions of refugees. Taiwan has a population of around 23.35 million people. It's very likely that much of that population who tries to flee will escape to the Philippines. There's also the fact that the United States military will be stationed in the Philippines to help with the refugee crisis and offer aid, housing, and services to those fleeing the Chinese invasion. The fact that the Philippines is in a unique position to aid the Taiwanese people by taking them in during an invasion is probably an annoyance for Beijing. The whole point of their gray zone tactics is to isolate and alienate Taiwan from the rest of the world. However, knowing that the Philippines and the U.S. forces stationed there would be willing and able to help the people of Taiwan as they fled for safety is just another complication for China's plans. Reason 4. The Philippines could threaten China's influence in the region this is probably at the bottom of China's list of worries, but it is worth noting that the Philippines' economy is growing fast. In the last two decades, the GDP of the Philippines has jumped from $94 billion to $394 billion. That's an average growth of around $15 billion annually. Over the last several decades, the Philippines' GDP growth rate has been around 5.7%, which is much higher than most countries around the world. However, China's annual GDP change has averaged around 8.7%. Even still, the Philippines' economy appears to be growing at a steady pace with no signs of slowing down. The economic success likely put the Philippines on China's radar in terms of countries to watch out for. Any threat to Beijing's power and influence in the region is not to be taken lightly. A rapidly modernizing Philippines is not something China is happy about since Manila is so closely allied with the U.S. As of right now, China is more concerned about the military aspect of the Philippines-American agreement. However, in the future, the economic implications of a growing Filipino economy may be an additional cause for concern. 
Now let's dive into the history of the Philippines and how the US ended up with so many military bases on its islands. Unfortunately, the Filipino people have been mistreated by a number of nations when colonized, including the Spanish, Japanese, Americans, and even China. However, understanding the past can also help us better understand the power dynamics at play today. It'll also provide a glimpse into why Beijing is so concerned with how things in the Philippines are unfolding. In April of 1898, the Spanish-American War broke out. After only months of fighting, the United States Navy destroyed the Spanish fleet stationed in Manila Bay, causing Spain to cede the Philippines to the US. It was at this point that the United States declared military rule and the American colonization of the Philippines began. The following year, General Aguinaldo declared the island should be free of foreign control and renamed the First Philippine Republic. He waged war against the American colonizers, leading to the Philippine-American War. After three years of fighting, the U.S. forces were victorious and the war ended. A U.S. civil government was installed. In 1935, political movements led to the establishment of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. The United States promised the country full independence within 10 years. Unfortunately, this freedom never came, as in 1941, a new colonizer took control of the nation. World War II was in full swing. Japanese forces invaded the Philippines and seized the northern islands. Atrocities occurred, including the massacre of entire towns and villages. It's estimated that as many as one million Filipino civilians died during the Japanese occupation. By 1944, U.S. forces reclaimed the island, and in 1946, the Republic of the Philippines was granted full independence. However, the U.S. military never really left the islands. In 1947, the United States was officially granted military basing rights throughout the Philippines. Over time, most of the bases were abandoned, and the U.S. military presence did eventually dwindle. However, in March of 1996, China fired a number of unarmed ballistic missiles across the Taiwan Strait, which splashed down just off the coast of Taiwan. The United States deployed two carrier battle groups to the waters around Taiwan to signal to Beijing to stand down and that an attack on Taipei would not be tolerated. It was this incident that led to the United States renewing its alliance with the Philippines and to begin strengthening its position in the region. In 1998, the Visiting Forces Agreement was signed and the number of American troops stationed in the Philippines increased. The United States and the Philippines began collaborating on fighting the War on Terror. Radical Islamist groups had begun operating in the southernmost sections of Mindanao. These terrorists claimed to have ties to Al-Qaeda and the Islamic State. However, in 2012, an incident led to Filipino and American forces refocusing their attention on China. A confrontation between Philippine and Chinese naval vessels arose along the Scarborough Shoal Reef in the South China Sea. Both nations claimed the reef belonged to them as large reserves of oil and gas were found to be located in the area. Nothing came of the conflict other than the Philippines bringing the dispute before an international court, which ruled in their favor. Beijing refused to acknowledge the legitimacy of the trial, and tensions over the Scarborough Shoal Reef continued. In 2016, Rodrigo Duterte was elected president and suggested the Philippines rely less heavily on the U.S. and look towards China for the future. In hindsight, that wasn't a complete surprise. Duterte ruled over the Philippines using draconian methods and an iron fist to punish anyone found with drugs of any kind. Thousands of Filipinos were arrested and killed as a result of his policies. Duterte took more of an authoritarian stance than a democratic one, which might have been why he sought closer ties to Beijing. However, in March 2022, when an invasion of Ukraine by Russia seemed all but inevitable, Duterte came running back to the United States for protection. The concern was that if Russia was willing to invade its neighbor, then China might be thinking about expanding its own borders by attacking Taiwan. The concern was that after Taiwan, the Philippines could be Beijing's next target. Talks began and it appeared the Philippines would allow the U.S. to resume operations at their previous base at Subic Bay and the nearby Clark Air Base. When Bongbong Marcos took over, the alliance was expanded to include nine bases in total. It was at this point that China began to recognize the major role the Philippines would play in hindering its future plans for the region. It is worth noting that not all the Filipinos are on board with the deployment of American troops within their borders. The older generations remember stories of colonization and what it was like to try to build a country after centuries of foreign powers ravishing their lands and oppressing the Filipino people. It was in 1992 that the last American-controlled military base in the Philippines was shut down. American troops still operated in the country on joint training missions, but there were no longer United States bases on Philippine soil. 
The reason for this was that many felt like having US-controlled bases in the Philippines brought into question the true sovereignty of the nation. These same feelings are once again rising. The International League of People's Struggle is an anti-imperialist movement that seeks to warn people about the dangers of allowing foreign powers to have a military presence in sovereign nations and educate the world about the atrocities that happened due to colonization. They also voice concerns that in the past and present, US troops perpetrated crimes against Filipino women and the LGBTQ community. This has included soldiers being tried and convicted of murder, sexual assault, and violation of human rights. However, in those cases, the American troops were almost always sent back to the US, where they were never held accountable for their crimes. Regardless of how the Filipino people feel, the government believes that having a US military presence in the Philippines is vital to maintaining the status quo in the region. China knows that the Philippines poses a threat to its power and influence now that the US-Filipino alliance has been repaired and new US bases have been set up in the region. Marcos Jr.'s administration has stated the Philippines would stand by and assist the United States in any armed conflict that arose with Taiwan and China. The reality is that the Philippines was likely always going to be in danger if China invaded Taiwan due to its proximity to the conflict. The Philippines decided to take a proactive approach to this threat and allied itself with the United States for additional protection, money, and resources in the years to come. This has left Beijing furious, and it's clear they now see the Philippines as a major thorn in their side. Now watch US World War III plan, or check out Taiwan will cripple China with this tiny weapon.